I've never watched or read One Piece, because it is very long, but I sure do want to. We're gonna review it, arc by arc. I would do it saga by saga, but it's like a hundred chapters per video, uh, and I would die. <laughs> I was thinking of watching the anime, and I found out about the 4Kids version, where they try to make it into like a kid's show, and you know what? I can see why! Like, look at One Piece and tell me it doesn't look like it could have been a kid's show. It's bright, it's colorful, and the characters are goofy looking and exaggerated. The main character just I exaggerates their limbs and is, is made out of rubber. Like, if I was looking at this and was told, like, hey, can we make a kid's show out of it? Heck, I'd, I'd probably say yeah, too. One Piece starts off with Gold Rogers, amazing name by the way, who before their execution tells people that they're free to get his treasure, the One Piece. And this starts off like this huge wave of piracy. I don't know how long it's been going on for, but there's a ton of pirates at sea. One of those pirates is Shanks, who stops by the small town with a young Luffy in the first chapter. And while we don't see a lot of Shanks, we see that Luffy really looks up to him. Luffy wants to be a pirate too. Even as a kid, there's like a raw determination. Like, they really want to be a pirate. Quick question. We don't see Luffy's family. Like, parents or anything? Uh, are they pirates? Are they dead? Are they missing? Luffy ends up eating this magical fruit that they took from Shanks, which is called the gum gum fruit, which turns their body into rubber. And that's a really interesting idea with one downside. You can't swim. Like, ever. Which is kind of bad for a pirate. I do got questions though. Are there more fruits? Are they just rare on like rare trees? Can you eat multiple fruits? Does eating multiple fruits somehow give you more debuffs? I don't know. Hopefully we get answers to uh, some of this stuff. Actually, I'm kind of surprised that Shanks doesn't make a big fuss out of it, given the fact that, you know, it's a rare magical fruit. Like, wouldn't it be worth a ton of currency? Then again, that doesn't seem to be something that Shanks really cares about. They seem to care about their crew and maybe going on adventures. Like, they get confronted by baddies, but they don't fight them until Luffy gets attacked by the baddies. Then, Shanks and his crew cares, right? Luffy, by the end, after all that, after knowing that they will drown in water, still wants to become a pirate. That being said, everyone thinks pirates are bad people. Like, people tell Luffy pirates are dangerous and that if you become one, it'll lower the reputation of the entire town. Even if people act friendly to pirates, there's still like a lot of stigma with becoming or hanging around one. And while Shanks wasn't a bad pirate from what we see, there are worse pirates. Like the next one we meet, Alvita, who is ruthless to her crew. She kidnapped this boy named Kobe and makes them their cabin boy. She carries a, <laughs> a giant beating stick. Kobe, from the minute they've been kidnapped, has been working on a ship. Like, Kobe's clearly not a fan of pirates since they've been kidnapped by pirates. So when Luffy tells him he wants to become one, Kobe thinks that's crazy. To be the best pirate, you need to one, become the king of the pirates, which means making the whole world kneel to you. Two, get Roger's treasure, the One Piece. And to do that, you have to enter the Grand Line, which is like the starting line for all the big named pirates. And the Grand Line has been called the Pirate's Graveyard. And Luffy doesn't care. They're just like, oh, we need to enter the Grand Line? Yeah, sure, we'll do that. And there's a lot of strong characterization in this chapter. Like, Luffy hears that Alvita is stopping Kobe from accomplishing his dreams, and then immediately is determined to help Kobe. So he beats her up and steals the boat to help Kobe escape. They run into a town and learn about a prisoner called Zoro the Pirate Hunter, which everybody is afraid of, who's being kept in the cell of the Navy, which everyone is also afraid of. And that's because the Navy, the captain and the captain's son, are pretty bad people. Like, they're bullying the townsfolk and taking their earnings and punishing anyone who goes against them. Like, the Navy here is not portrayed as good. A little girl also came with them and snuck in some rice balls because Zoro was nice to her. The captain's son, Helmipo, which has this like ridiculous haircut, uh, finds out and just utterly destroys her rice balls and the face uh, that little girl makes when that happened just hurts. You immediately, well, <laughs> well, even from looking at him uh, and the way they walk, you can immediately tell that this is like a hateable character. They did a really good job at just capturing the, the utter hateability of Helmipo. And after Helbopo leaves, 
uh, Zoro asked Luffy to give him a rice ball because even though it's all gross and muddy now and stomped on, that little girl made it for him. Which is, again, very strong characterization for Zoro. Like, you could have just lied. Like, the five-second rule doesn't apply here, but you did it anyways. The captain's son lies to Zoro, saying that if they can survive in the cell for a month, they'll be free. When, in reality, Hemabo plans on just executing him. And by Helmepo lying, he just goes to ham on him, making him officially like an enemy of the Navy. Which is finally when Helmepo runs over to uh, his dad, who's the captain, and we finally see like Captain Axe Hand Morgan. Is that axe hand really necessary? Is that just like a normal axe that's been shoved into the hand? Now I can't stop thinking about it. Like, how do you straighten that arm? Everyone's afraid of Captain Axe Head Morgan, even the people in the Navy. They're like, nope, I, I don't want this guy to be in charge. Kobe doesn't think that's how proper Navy should function and goes against the Navy to free Zoro. While Luffy goes up and tries to take the swords that Zoro used to have, so maybe they can escape or fight the Navy. There's a lot of themes about dreams. Luffy wants to become the king of the pirates. Kobe wants to become part of the Navy, but a good Navy. Zoro wants to become the best swordsman around. And it seems like they're all helping each other in this moment, at least, attempting to achieve that dream. All right, Luffy helps free Zoro, and they both end up just taking out Captain X and Morgan. And here's where I'll mention that the fight scenes have some beautiful frames in them. Frames? Panels? I, I think it looks pretty when Oda does the art good. Like some of these shots are just moi. So they've taken out the Navy and while they're technically now enemies of the Navy, are they really? When like Axe Hand Morgan was fine killing his own people and like pillaging the townsfolk. I mean, they are as bad as pirates. So Kobe ends up joining the Navy now that Axe Hand Morgan is no longer in the picture and Zoro and Luffy set sail to find a navigator. What can I say? I mean, th this was lovely. I'm already partway through the story, and uh, the manga has been pretty great. And uh, and I'm trying to take my time and enjoy the story and write these scripts. So uh, hopefully the next arc will be reviewed soon. But I don't want to rush it or burn myself out because I'm really enjoying the story. And, uh, and I don't know. Maybe we could read it together and discuss it like arc by arc, you know? 